Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and honors and double honors to the Aki I'm pushing His truth in all sincerity. Today's lesson is going to be over insecurity, insecurities and jealousy. Um, men and women have this problem, but mainly we know that women have an insecurity problem um, and it's not profitable when it comes to the Hebrew culture. <clears throat> and the reason why that is, is because of lack of understanding of your role. The lack of understanding of your role in this, um, in this culture. So let's get a little bit of understanding on your role and we'll find out how it links up with not becoming insecure. So, let's get the first scripture is going to be 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 11, verse 3. <clears throat> Reads, but I would have you know, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. So, right off the bat, we have the order, the divine order. The divine order is God, Christ, man, and then woman. So the woman in today's society is up above or equal to a man. Now, when it comes to the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, you're all the way down below the man. And it's, that, it's done that way for a reason, because the Most High God cares about you, and he cares about what he created. And he has a special place for you. Now, you might see it as a negative state or a negative role, but it's not. It's, de it's designed that way. So, and it says a lot about, this role says a lot about um, the, the, the role in the, in, the, in the house, the marriage, uh, uh, the, just the way everything is set up. Um, understand this. If you can't, say something to if you can't say something to Christ you shouldn't say it to your man and let's pull this out real quick this is the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22 it says wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So the way you're supposed to submit to your husband is the same way you submit to your Lord. It's the same way you to submit to Christ. So if it's not being said or done to Christ, it shouldn't be said or done to your man. Um, another big thing that hits um, the Hebrew homes in this culture is that when you go to your job, you honor your boss greater than you do your husband. Uh, you don't talk back. There is no bickering. There is no argument. Um, your boss can almost say, do anything almost to you. The only reason why you don't react the same way you do to your husband is because you know there's a consequence and there's a penalty behind it. You won't act out that way or you'll lose your job. So this mentality needs to come to your home when you when you honor your husband, it should be better than you do your boss, right? So understand your role. Understanding your role will uh, snuff out a lot of the insecurity, okay? Let's, get, let's go back to 1 Corinthians. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 7. It reads... For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of man. Okay, so glory is um, great beauty or take great pride or pleasure in. So the Most High God... His glory is man on earth. 
and the glory of man is his woman, is his wife. So he's going to take pleasure in his wife. He's uh, the same way. So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 7 says, For as much indeed are not to slack you, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image of and glory of God, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. So glory is something to be taken great pride in. So the Most High God take, takes pride in righteous men. So the same way that the Most High God takes pleasure in righteous men is the same way the man should take pleasure in a righteous woman or in his righteous wife. Right? And let's get Genesis chapter 2. Chapter 2 and verse 21 to get more understanding on this um, and the reason why this is. Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up his flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God hath taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So a rib is a protection. It is to protect the vital organs. It is a smooth, slender bone. It is to curve, a smooth, smooth, slender and curved bone. So it's to protect the, um, it's to protect uh, the vital organs. So the woman is there to support, to help protect, to help lift up that man. So when that man uh, she should know the, 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 the fears, the things that, that gets him pumped. And she should always be gearing him to uh, um, glorify the Most High, pushing him to do the work for God. She should, always be, she should always be pushing him to do that work for God because ultimately it benefits her. It benefits her children. It benefits the whole house. When that man is pushed, if that man is slumber, is he, if he's, if he's um, lacking and slacking, that uh, he, he's lied, I, he's laid idle, and that's uh, we know that um, they say the idle hand, the idle mind is the devil's playground. So when he's idle, he's not going to be doing any good, right? So um, she is to find, uh, uh, she should be always thinking, well, um, how can he do more work for the Most High? What can he be doing? Push him to do the Most High God's work. That's what you should be doing. Your mind should be occupied on uh, pushing him to be better for the Lord, to be better for the kingdom, okay? We're all, we're all rehearsing uh, uh, for, we're all auditioning for e e uh, salvation for eternity. We're all auditioning for eternity, right? So we got to um, continue to push one another and to lift one another up. So you have a big role as a, as a wife, as a woman, okay? Let's get um, the book of Genesis, stay in the book of Genesis Go to 3 and verse 16. Genesis 3 and 16 reads, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall roll over thee. So that's your desire. What are you desiring for your husband? It shouldn't just be, it shouldn't just be sex. It should be more to that. Your desire should be more to that. It should be, okay, I'm going to help him, uh, uh, like I said earlier, just to, just, to, um, just to boost him, to try to do him, try to, try to make him better for the Lord, for his Lord, because he has a Lord that he has to subject to. Our Lord is, the, uh, is Christ, like I said in uh, 1, Corinthians, uh, 1, uh, yeah, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. So our Lord is Christ. So we got to submit to our Lord. You have to submit to your Lord, right? So um, that's something that your desire should be. You have, should have a great desire to push him to do better for his Lord, right? That's an honorable thing, okay? So let's go to, um, and the reason why this is, let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 26. Sirach, chapter 26. So like, yeah, I said 26, I meant 36. <clears throat> 36 and 24. 
Sirach chapter 36 and verse 24. It reads, He that getteth a wife getteth a possession, a help like unto himself, a pillar of rest. So, you women don't possess, possess your husband, but your husband possesses you, right? And it says, He that getteth a wife getteth a... Uh, he that getteth a wife begetteth a possession, a help like unto himself. So he should be treating you as if he would himself, right? So he's going to make sure that he takes care of you in return. When he sees that you're honorable and you're righteous and you're pushing him to do good and to do the best thing you can for the Lord and your desire is for him to do best, to do the best for his, for his Lord, he's going to, he's going to honor you. He's going to honor you in that. Right. Because he's going to see that um, she's, he's going to see that he has a righteous w uh, wife. Right. And it says a help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. So you should be a pillar of rest to him. You shouldn't be bickering. You shouldn't be complaining. You shouldn't be uh, uh, strife or, or trying to find out who he's talking to or, or having those insecurity or, or jealousies uh, issues. Right. That's 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 really that's going off. That's hurting him. Right. And that causes confusion and conflict. And you act out of your role. You, you're you're acting uh, like the marriage is 50-50, and it ain't 50-50. The most I got didn't set it up to be, right? So if you can act insecure, if you can act insecure to your husband, then your husband can act insecure to Christ. And that ain't right. That don't even make no sound, even sound right. So he can't act insecure to Christ, right? He can't do that because Christ is his Lord, right? So you got to apply those same things. If you can do it to your Lord, then then your husband can do it to his Lord. And if it makes sense, then try it out. But if it don't, don't try it. Don't try it, right? Uh, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7 reads, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Give honor unto, your, unto the wife. As unto the weaker vessel. So we're as men, as husbands, we're supposed to deal with our wives according to knowledge. And knowledge means facts. So we're supposed to give them facts. We're supposed to give them what we do know. And if we don't know, we go find it. So we're supposed to deal with them according to knowledge and give honor unto the wife. Uh, as unto the weaker vessel. Now we know that as a wife, as a woman, she has a lot of emotions. And she has a hard time controlling those emotions, so we're not supposed to deal with her like we would our brothers. We're not supposed to deal with her uh, rough or harsh or aggressive. We shouldn't do that. So um, we got to know how to deal with our wives. We got to know how to, to turn the dial. We got to know how to change modes because sometimes we be in that rough, aggressive mode all the time, especially when we're around our brothers in brotherhood. We just always rough, always aggressive. When we see our wives, we got to like, okay, they delicate. They got to, um, they got those emotions and we got to, we got to dial it back some, right? We got to dial it back a little bit. So how do we honor them? How do we truly honor them? Um, uh, according to scriptures, right? So let's get, let's get that. Let's get uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. It says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whore whoremongers and adulterers, Yahweh will judge. So we know that marriage is sex. So we deal, yes, when we... Uh, when we have sex with our with a woman, that is marriage. So you 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 honor them, you take care of them, you have a, 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 a you can you can make you can make a vow to them, right? To, that you're going to protect them, that you're going to take care of them, that you're going to um, clothe them, right? That you're going to have that that marital duty. You're going to dwell with them, right? So that's something that's honorable. They want protection. They don't want to be. Uh, kicked out in the streets or feel like they're not going to be taken care of or be dumped uh, dumped out or as soon as you you look at another woman they they gone they they want that protection they want that hedge of protection and we know the most high god he deals with those men he deals with righteous men in giving heads as a protection let's prove that too let's prove that too let's go to the book of um 
Sirach, chapter 36, verse 25. Sirach, chapter 36, verse 25. It says, where no hedge is, and we know that the Most High God deals with men, where no hedge is, so the hedge is protection, there, there the possession is spoiled. So the possession is spoiled. Our wives are spoiled. They're destroyed. Right? It says, And he that hath no wife will wander up and down mourning. So he's going to be, he's going to be uh, distraught. He's going to be, uh, uh, he's going to be all over the place. Right? He's going to be wandering up and down mourning. Right? In mourning. Right? So he's going to be, he's going to be heartbroken or anguish. He's going to be uh, uh, traumatized. Right? So we got a, our righteous men have got to uh, see our women um, the same way that he sees us. And let's get that too. Let's get that in the book of uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 16, I believe. 1 Samuel 16 and verse uh, 7. 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7, it says, But the Lord saith unto Samuel. So this is the Lord speaking. Look not on the countenance, nor on the height on the height of his statue stature, because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for I look upon for man look upon uh, upon the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh upon the heart. So this is how a righteous man sees a woman. He shouldn't, a righteous man shouldn't see a woman based off of her appearance. He should see a, he should see a, a woman based off of her righteousness. All right. How she, um, so when he sees her, he's going to look straight past that physical. He's going to see her heart, which, you know, the heart is the mind. So he's going to see how she, how she dress, how she operates. And we know that, um, what she is wearing is, um, what she wears is what her heart, what her heart feels. Right. So if she's wearing fringes. If she's wearing a dress, we know that she's she's in the right spirit. She's in the right mind. Right. And she knows she's modest. We know that that's a we know that's a, a woman that we can work with. Right. So we see righteous man sees the spirit just like the Lord sees the spirit of the man. So we should also see the spirit of the woman. OK, let's go to um, stay in the book for Samuel. First Samuel chapter two and verse thirty, it says, "Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father shall walk before me forever, but now the Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me, I will honor." So this is why it's important, again, for you wives to push your husbands to honor the Lord, to keep those laws, statutes, and commandments, to make sure they're going to camp, to make sure they're they passing out flyers. If they're holding signs, make sure they're holding signs because you could be an example. You don't even have to say nothing. You just, you just be there. That's an example. That's a work for the Lord, right? Um, so you can just be that example. We can be that example for the Lord, Um I believe I believe that's in the book of Judith, uh, chapter eight. That scripture escapes me right now. But this is but wives, you should be pushing your husbands to be honorable because it bless it will bless your house. It will bless your nation. You know what I'm saying? Your husband will continue to be blessed, and when your husband's blessed, you're blessed. Okay? It's just smart. It's just a smart. It's just that's just you know we not we shouldn't be simple about this. So it says. Uh, for them that honor me, I will honor, and they that despise me shall be uh, lightly esteemed. So they're not going to be lightly honored, right? They're not going to be lightly glorified. I mean, they're going to be lightly glorified. They're going to be just, huh? They're going to be that halfway. They're going to be that um, that lukewarm Israelite, right? So that's a that's a way that that you can be honored is by uh, when you push your husband to do the Lord's work. You're going to be honored for that, right? Let's go to um, 2 Corinthians. 
2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3 reads, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, subtility. so the serpent de, de, uh, beguiled Eve. The serpent uh, knew that Eve was weak and that she could... Uh, um, get to Adam, right? He pushed on, he pushed her, he pushed false doctrines and that feeling of good feeling, but um, um, that can influence e, uh, Adam, right? So, uh, uh, and, and men, we let our guard down around our wives. So we know that Satan can get through to Eve. So we got to always stay guard. We got to always stay uh, on our P's and Q's as men and as women. We got to always stay on our P's and Q's. So it says um, that the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. So it says, um, so your mind should be not, should be corrupt, corrupted for, uh, from the sim simplicity that is in Christ. So we got to make sure that we stay right in this truth, right? We can't be corrupted. We can't be corrupted, right? We got a job to do and our wives Everybody plays a part, and our wives play a very big part, whether you see it or not. It's a very big role, and you can cause your man to fall off by watching these uh, Atlanta housewives and, and, and acting outside your role because the spirit jumped off on you when you saw a woman uh, acting like she's, uh, she's masculine and she dominated her man, right? She dominated her man, so that spirit jumped off on you, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do my husband that way, or, 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 or I like that. I like how she did that. So I like how she handled that. She handled that uh, uh, very um, masculine. The girl's wearing pants and you saw her wearing pants and she's going to act as a masculine, as manly in a masculine, masculine role. And she's going to dom she's going to try to dominate the situation, dom dominate the situation. Right. So we got to make sure that we stay on our P's and Q's, that we can't just let anything come into us. And us men, we got to make sure that we kind of stay uh, um, uh, our eyes you know, make sure that we are teaching our wives, right? Because it talked about how uh, we're supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to deal with our women according to knowledge. So be dropping jewels on your wives, be dropping jewels on them, making sure that they understand that the laws that the most high God comes first before anything, it comes before anything. You know, nothing else become before the most high God, not your children, not nothing, right? And yes, women, you might feel sad or sorry when you hear that, but it's the truth, right? It's the truth. Um, so that's, that's the role, understanding the role of the husband and the wife. So when you act outside your role, um, insecurity will come in. Okay. Also, uh, why is insecurity happen and what can you do to fix it? Okay. This is why insecurity happens. Let's get, um, in the book of Ephesians, book of Ephesians chapter six. Verse 12, it uh, reads, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of, dark, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So the principalities and the uh, flesh and the, um, the flesh and blood is not against flesh and blood, but the principalities against powers and rulers and in, in, uh, in dark places of this world. So it's, it's against the spiritual, it's against the mind. It's against the mind of this, um, of this, uh, of this world. So your mind has to be guarded up all the time. You got to make sure that these spirits aren't jumping off on you, meaning that you see somebody else's spirit that, uh, that they, that they had, and it might've got off on you. I know a lot of our men, uh, might come, might turn gay because they see something that uh, a homosexual did that they liked. Uh, maybe he, he fought good and they thought that, uh, okay, because he fought good, I'm going to be homosexual so I can fight good. Something stupid like that, something dumb, right? So that spirit will jump off on you. You start acting homosexual. Now you can't get out of it, right? So, uh, uh, and, and vice versa, right? The woman wearing pants, she's asking, she's acting all masculine. Do you like how she handled the situation? Now you start to handle the situation like that. 
gone off because you didn't you didn't guard your you didn't guard your mind right this is a, a not against flesh and blood but against uh, uh principalities powers spiritual uh, uh wickedness this this is what this is you need to guard your mind okay um another thing that causes uh insecurity causes insecurity and in, for us to fall let's go to the book of first timothy chapter 5 and verse 12 1 Timothy chapter 5, uh, so like you'll start at verse 13. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 13, it says, And withal they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busy bodies, speaking things which they ought not. So, you go about, Women go about the house, uh, men too, men too, men go about uh, the, the house, they're idled, they're wanders about going from house to house, um, tattlers, busy bodies, speaking of, speaking of things they ought not to, right? You got to uh, learn how to uh, operate. You got to learn how to walk in the spirit. You can't be um, busy bodies. You can't be gossipers. You can't be going around here doing all manner of uh, uh, folly. Right, you got to be uh, uh, keepers at home, right? Ain't that what the Bible say? According to the wives, the wives you need to be keepers at home, teachers of good things, right? We're gonna get into that too. So uh, these things cause insecurities. These things cause jealousies. These things cause anxieties. Uh, um, let me read the definition of insecurity. Insecurity. It says, um, in uncertainty, or anxiety about someone. Uh, uh, about oneself, lack of confidence. So you're lacking in confidence of yourself, right? Uh, definition two, state of uh, being open to danger. So you're, you're uh, uh, it says threat, lack of protection. So you fear that you lack protection. You fear that you are in danger. You feel that fear that you're open to danger, right? Because the woman may try to, operate outside her role and when she does operate inside her role she is in danger right she is in danger you have a right to feel that way when you start operating outside your role you have a right to feel that fear that feel that way okay because you are in danger you're in danger of your whole house uh turning upside down okay because you're trying to dominate your husband right especially if he's trying to be a righteous man right even if he's not and if you know this truth you try to help him teach or not teach him but Push him to know somebody that is uh, that is a righteous man, okay? So that he can be a righteous man, all right? So, um, let's get um, um, uh, um, how to stop, right? How, how we stop doing this, how we stop being idle, idle-minded. How do we stop being gossipers? How do we stop being busy bodies? Let's get the book of Amos, chapter 5, and verse 15. The book of Amos, chapter 5, and verse 15. It reads, Hate the evil, and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It says, uh, It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. So we got to hate the evil. You have to learn how to hate evil. You have to learn how to hate evil. You have to learn how to love good. And the only way to do that is to study these scriptures, to be in these scriptures, to know what right and what wrong is, and to know what to hate and what not to hate. You have to know, okay? But you got to hate evil. That's a, that's a big key of getting out of this insecurity. It's a big key of getting out of this jealousy, okay? Um, let's go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 97, and verse 10. Book of Psalms, chapter 97, and verse 10 says, Yet ye, uh, ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of the saints and dealeth with them uh, of the hand of the wicked. So we're supposed to hate evil. That's what it says right there again. We're supposed to hate evil. All right? We've got to hate evil and love the good. Okay? Another way of getting out of this uh, 
this idol, uh, Slakia, out of this insecurity and jealousy, is know what to be, is know what we should be doing. Let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 33, and verse 27. Sirach, chapter 33, and verse 27. Reads, send him to labor, right? Send him to labor that he be not idle, for idleness teaches much evil. Idleness teaches much, much evil, right? It says, 28, set him to work as it is fit for him if he be not obedient, put no put more put on more heavy fetters so uh, a, a man or a woman put them to work right it's not just labor or fit uh, 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 so like it. it's not worldly not so much worldly work but being occupied in these scriptures right studying let's come on let's go to the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. What we should be, what we should be focusing on, right? What we should be focusing on. This is the book of Joshua, chapter one and verse eight. It says, "This, this book of the law, shall not depart out of thy mouth," meaning you should always be speaking the words of this Bible. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according. You should observe to do according these ancient examples. You should observe to do them according to all that is written therein. For then, for then thou shalt thou shall make thy way prosperous, and they shall uh, and they shall have good success. So when you are meditating on these scriptures, when you're occupied in these scriptures and this law. And knowing what to do, hating evil and loving good, you're going to have good success, right? Are you praying that these curses be lifted? Are you praying that these curses be lifted up? Are you praying every day? That's something that you should be doing. Husbands, that's something that you should be telling your wives to do, right? Let's go, to the, let's go back to the book of Sirach. Let's go back to the book of Sirach. Uh, Sirach chapter 39. All right, Sirach chapter 39 and start at verse 1. Sirach chapter 39 start at verse 1. It says, But he that uh, giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecy. So when you give your mind to the Most High, when you truly give your mind to the Most High, you're not going to be in security. You ain't got time to be insecure. You ain't going to have time to be jealous. You ain't going to have time to find out who he's texting, right? You're not going to have time to find out who he's um, who he's on the phone with, right? You're not going to have time for all of that because your mind's going to be occupied in these scriptures. It says to, uh, and is to occupy and the meditation thereof and will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients and be occupied in prophecy. Verse two, he will, he will keep the sayings of the renowned men. So he's going to always have these sayings on him, right? He's going to be he's going to be speaking these uh, these scriptures, right? And people are going to be like, is that is that poetry that you're speaking? Right? Are you speaking poems? What is this? What are you saying? Like you're always speaking like in riddles. What is this? No, that's the scriptures. That's a good thing. You should always be. Um, you should. Uh, it says, uh, and he shall keep the sayings of the renowned men. It says, and. Uh, and their subtle parables are and will be uh, there also. Verse 3, he will seek out the secrets and grave sentences and be um, conser uh, conserved, conservant in dark parables. So you're going to always know what these parables are saying. You're going to know because you're always constantly in them. In them. Check this out. It says, he shall serve... He shall serve among great men and appear before prince, princes. He will travel through strange countries. He will, um, it says, for he have tried, 
he have tried the good and the evil among men. So it says he will serve amongst great men. So when he's so uh, well versed in these scriptures and these parables and these dark sayings, people are going to recognize that this man has great wisdom and he's going to travel through countries. He's going to travel through strange countries that he ain't never been before because people are going to want to hear his wisdom and what, what he hears about what they say about this verse. All right, they're going to call him up and be like, hey, what's this? What you doing? Be occupied in these scriptures. Be occupied. You have better things to do, right? One of the things, another thing that we should be doing and focusing on, let's go to the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, Old Testament, chapter 12 and verse 13. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So we know duty means job. So this is your whole job. This is your whole job. Do you got all 613 down? Right? You got all 613 down that you ain't got, you ain't got time to be. Uh, uh, if you got them all down, you ain't going to have time to be gossiping. Right? You're going to be walking in love because you're going to know what you should be doing. You're going to be know that you shouldn't be gossiping. Okay? Let's go back to the book of Syrac. Um, let's go to the book, book of Syrac, chapter 3, and verse 23. Syrac, chapter 3, and verse 23. It says, Be not curious in unnecessary matters uh, for more things that show unto thee than men understand. So you shouldn't be worried about what this next man is doing, what your husband is doing. You shouldn't be worried about that because your husband, you are a possession to your husband, right? You shouldn't be worried about what your husband is doing. That's an unnecessary matter. You're being curious in unnecessary matters. You're stepping outside your role, right? Your job is to be pushing your husband and have a good desire to him. And that desire, like I said, is more than just sex. That desire means that you should be pushing him to uh, uh, um, keeping God's commandments, right? Going out teaching, right? Having good counsel, taking good counsel, right? His mind should be always occupied in the scriptures, asking questions about the Bible. Make sure that you're doing your job. Have that good desire to him, right? It says, verse 24, for many are deceived in their own vain opinions. So you're insecure about what he's talking about or what he's doing, right? You're insecure about what he's got going on in his phone. It, the Bible calls that your own vain opinion, right? It says, and, and evil uh, suspicion hath overcometh their, their judgment. So that's an evil suspicion. Now you're curious. Now you're uh, uh, thinking that uh, that he's doing something that he ain't supposed to. And you have no right to do that. Right? You're operating outside your role. Okay? Let's get this last scripture in the book of Titus to figure out more about what our wives should be doing. Since we found out what our husbands should be doing. Find out what our wives should be doing. Go to the book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. The book of Titus chapter 2. In verse 3, reads, The aged woman likewise, that they be in good that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Right? To become holiness. So what should you be doing as a wife to become holiness? You should be holy holy means to be set apart, right? So look at the women outside of, of Israel and find out what they're doing and do the exact opposite. Exact, find out what they're, how they're uh, treating their men, right? And do the exact, exact opposite. You're supposed to be becoming holy, be set apart, be different from them, right? They're wearing pants, slapping their man upside the head, right? You should be bowing to your husband, right? Like, let me bring that out. Let me bring that out. This is uh, First Peter. Uh, select you. Uh, let me see. Chapter 3 and verse 6. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 6. It says, 
even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. So Sarah called Abraham Lord, right? That's completely different than what this world is teaching, okay? And the understanding behind that is, is that when you call your man Lord, you are giving him respect and you're getting respect at the same time. Because when you call him Lord, you're telling him that, hey, I'm giving you all of me to take care of. You're now responsible of me. So he's he's has to understand that now, okay, she's calling me Lord. Now I have a responsibility. Now I have a, a responsibility to take care of her because she's calling me Lord, right? So, and then you're getting respect from that, okay? Because you're calling him Lord. So people are going to look at that and be like, wow, she's calling him Lord, right? And she it says, it says, and, uh, and are not uh, uh, afraid with any amazement. So when you bow to your husbands, there's cultures in the East that still bow to their husbands. That's honorable and that's beautiful, right? You shouldn't be amazed at yourself or amazed at another Israelite woman that does that, right? Because our ancestors did that, okay? That's honorable. That's noble, okay? You shouldn't be amazed at that, okay? Let's get back to Titus, though. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. It says, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not false accusers, right? Not gossipers. It says, um, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, verse 4, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, right? So you should be teaching your, your, the younger women to love their husbands, how they should have a desire to their husbands. Tell them how they should have a desire, how they should be keeping their husband's mind on, uh, on, on good things, on the scriptures. Your conversation should be like, oh, this is what I did to help my husband's mind stay on the scriptures when he was down or when he was trying to almost get into folly. I, I, I helped him out with this. That's a good backbone. That's a good rib. That's what we need. We need that as Israelite men. Okay. It says, um, to be discreet, verse five, to be discreet, chase keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, obedient to their own husbands. That they, that the word of God may uh, be not blasphemed. So if you're doing anything contrary to this, if you're doing anything opposite of this, you could be blaspheming the most high God. You're blaspheming the scriptures, right? And you don't want to be um, accused of blaspheme, blaspheming. That's something you don't want, right? So I hope everyone was edified with that lesson. Um, insecurity, jealous, understanding your role. Uh, uh, why insecurity happens and what you can do to fix insecurity. Okay, so um, with that, I'm gonna say call Hala Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the Akim pushing this truth in all sincerity, and never ever ever forget death to America. Shalom.